All right, so let's get into ETF news today and the likelihood of an ETF actually coming through and what this means for crypto. Obviously, Bitcoin and Ethereum both starting to make some big market manipulation and moves for sure. We'll break it all down for you. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right, so let's talk about a few things that has happened here recently that could indicate even further that this ETF is going to happen. Here is, of course, Walter Bloomberg. Funny. Uh, U.S. Bitcoin ETF issuer talks with the SEC have advanced to key detail sources. Um, so uh, discussions between the U.S. securities regulator and asset managers now hoping to list Bitcoin ETFs. All of this is heating up. 13 firms, including Grayscale, BlackRock, etc. All of these are in more advanced talks with the SEC. All of this is pretty much public. And most of what Wall Street does in terms of analysts, they are constantly on top of this. Green Whale came in on this saying U.S. regulators warming to the idea of approving a spot Bitcoin ETF. A few points that were highlighted here for us is this right here. Agencies are engaging in what could be con conclusory discussions with various issuers, meaning, hey, we're getting to the end. And the other thing is the SEC is currently in advanced talks regarding key technical. So this is getting past the idea of an approval and into the idea of how can we make this work? So that is a pretty big uh, statement, I think. Now, granted, it could still break down in that area because if they don't like something that, from a technical standpoint, that could be the thing that also could kill it. So there are still a lot of scenarios that play out that do not get this approved that are still at play. So it's not a slam dunk just yet, but it is high probability. Uh, this, of course, a few weeks ago, um, James Safer, been on our show, noted that the decision window will take place between January 5th and 10th. This is the point of time that I tell everybody right now, not financial advice, but I'm watching what happens on this and queuing up into trades, meaning am I ready to hold or am I ready to liquidate certain trades, certain actions at this timing? This is going to be a critical moment right now, I think, for the markets in general. A couple other points I want to hit on. Bitcoin's price could potentially rise above 50K in early 2024. A few points around this. Obviously, this will all lean into what's been happening on the ETF. But using the Metcalf price valuation band metric, a lot of these TA signals, uh, they look at capitalization, transaction volume, user activity. Obviously, it's very heated right now with Bitcoin uh, at its current price, uh, covering almost 44K. Bitcoin also may be targeting 50 to 53 based on this new network activity. Here's the other thing, though. I'm a little concerned that, I know we had the, our, you know, the video yesterday with Evan, are we overheated? A lot of people still believe, yeah, this is yet to come, meaning there's not a lot of retail in the market right now. And I would agree with that because to the point of a lot of people that I've talked to, we've had on the show, is are your friends calling you, for you guys that are in uh, crypto and have been for a long time, OGs, maybe you've been in for the last couple of years or the last 10 years, are you getting phone calls from families and friends right now about Bitcoin saying, hey, is this another entry point or is, is it Bitcoin back? Are you getting those kind of calls? If you're not, then retail's not here. And that's the case with me. We're not getting that many, I'm not getting that many calls specifically about this. Now I am getting people that are talking about it in some of our closed groups, but that are brand new to crypto. Uh, but as far as uh, overall, kind of an interesting, basically meaning retail's not here yet, market's still on. So Bitcoin's next move might be decided by Friday's job report. This is another factor that comes into, and the macro has been a heavy weight on the neck of Bitcoin throughout the year because it has been a slow mover. And now here we are on an accelerated path. But of course, jobs could be actually in a point right now where we're starting to see a little bit of shift. So the government on Friday will report the unemployment situation for November. They could add fuel to maybe stuff, snuff out a potential uh, Santa rally here uh, for sure. Rate hopes uh, have sparked gains across traditional markets as well as the S&P, posting an 8.9% advance in November. So that may be um, an interesting situation if some of the data. Remember, a lot of times the speculation on many of these reports never really hits it right on. So it could come in high or low. Uh, a couple of other things I want to hit on here, and that is the Kobe EC. Let me kind of zoom in on this for you. Uh, they conducted a Financial Times uh, survey, and there was a big difference between how analysts and the markets saw 2024 in terms of rate restructure. And that's the Fed funds rate, what we're going to see in terms of interest rates. 75% of economists surveyed believe that the Fed would cut rates by 50 basis points, not much, or less 
in 2020, all of 2024. So a lot of economists still looking at this as a very slow market. However, the market says, hey, wait a minute, we think it's going to be somewhere around the 200 basis points of rate cuts in 2024. We're talking about 4x in terms of the difference. Now, I'd love to know your opinion. Do you guys think we'll see early rate cuts in the first quarter by Chair Powell? Or do you think we'll continue for this higher for longer scenario? And instead of a soft landing, it's just a no landing. You know, we just continue on. What are your thoughts? Drop some comments down below. Make sure and like this video because it's going to help others, one, start to understand and discover what's happening in Web3, crypto, and really blockchain in general. For brand new people onto the show, make sure, of course, and subscribe. It's Hopefully, this will be your go-to place as these markets heat up. Other things that are happening right now, Robinhood is active in the EU. Uh, now they're doing a big promo, get a Bitcoin if you sign up and refer a friend. So they're signing up people and doing some pretty interesting marketing uh, tools. Vlad was on Squawk Box, and I'm going to play a clip for you of Vlad, CEO of, of Robinhood, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with that. But let me play a clip for this right here. Listen to what he had to say. Because we 75% in a month? Off, off air, we were talking about sort of yep. what's going on with crypto, um, what you're seeing. I mean, that's a, that's a, it's a, been a huge move, but it's also in terms of just straight volume, it's a huge situation. What do you think is happening? Um, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, I think a lot of people have forgotten that Robinhood is a major player in the cryptocurrency industry. We do a lot of things. We've obviously done a lot with retirement. We've rolled out 24-hour market for equities. But along this time, we've had a crypto team that's been innovating, that's been building stuff. And our approach with crypto is to make it very clear to customers that they're getting a great deal on their crypto in Robinhood. And so we've done a lot of work clarifying how. One thing I want to hit on here with uh, that Vlad's talking about is, and let's just be clear. Remember that Doge was the savior of Robinhood in the last bull run. It was really what put Robinhood on the map for crypto trading. Now, meme coins, uh, maybe that happens. Remember also Robinhood was the first to delist a lot of the major tokens like Cardano and Solana, uh, et cetera. Ironically, Avalanche stayed on. But the point being is that they've had a little bit of a rub with regulators, mainly. They're a publicly traded company. They're SEC, you know, um, I guess bound to a certain extent, constantly seeing the SEC within their regulation requirements and a lot of the things they have to do in terms of disclosure. So with all that being the case, I would argue that maybe they haven't been the greatest innovator in what's happening. I think Coinbase still being the top innovator right now, at least in terms of retail crypto. But could Robinhood make a run here? Their stock has been flying here recently, up almost 40% in the last five to 10 days. So that in itself is a pretty interesting um, situation, I think, overall. But at the same time, if crypto starts to really ramp up and we see these kind of trade volumes coming back in, Robinhood could could get saved here and literally see a massive run up, much like the Coinbase stock. So Coinbase, of course, has been uh, absolutely on a tear over the last 30 days. And if we get a Coinbase resolution in that motion to deny coming up soon, this could also help Robinhood. So there's a lot of factors. And remember, people coming into crypto the first time, what's their entry point? What is their gateway drug for entering into Crypto. Typically, it's a stock trader that's looking to diversify into crypto. And right now, Coinbase not offering stocks. Another point is, is that tokenized assets could flow into Robinhood as well. That would pl also apply to their situation. And remember that they can also offer the ETF. So there's a lot of functions here that are beneficial and positive for Robinhood as a whole. Key here will be is can they keep up with the Joneses in terms of innovation? Because eventually you go test the water somewhere like a Robin Hood or you know, wherever it might be. And then eventually within weeks, you feel like a, you're advanced and you're looking for the next component. And Coinbase typically could be that. I'd love to see how their retention rate holds in this next cycle because the early days of this next cycle will be very, very critical for Robin Hood's growth. Now, I can't leave you guys without a little bit of FUD, and that is right here, JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon says he would close down Bitcoin. I mean, first of all, that just shows you how much he knows about it. Close down Bitcoin and crypto if he were the government. Close it down. Yeah, let's close down the internet, close down air, electric, you know. Yes, of course, Jamie. 
I don't know. This guy is, uh, I don't understand this. And then, and then he turns around and they're trying to do ETFs and it's just, it's silliness. Silliness in Wall Street, I tell you. Silliness. Another point that happened, if you guys didn't watch the GOP last night, this was, I think, a big deal because we had crypto on the main stage at a GOP debate. Now that to me is mainstream. And Vivek, whether you like him or not, he was on fire and very on point because he referenced a case that is specific around overreach. And what he's talking about is this case that essentially looks at these government organizations, SEC, three letter word, you know, organizations that automatically pull up these kangaroo courts and their own uh, ideas of what should be versus what the law says. So you end up with a potential candidate here that could reverse that and simply say, Congress needs to pass the laws, you are not in charge, which means no more of this crap that we've seen, which is really kind of the regulation by enforcement, uh, which is what the SEC has been all about. So this may be good for digital assets, crypto and Web3. And all of that, looking at the markets before we get out of here, ETH, of course, has been moving up the charts now, hitting over 2,300. And Bitcoin, of course, eclipsing a little bit right there after it popped popped over 44,000, holding at 43.2 right now. So again, love to get you guys' feedback. Give me some comments down below. What are you doing in terms of your own plan? How are you guys playing these markets? And also, what are you most interested in in terms of projects? Love to get those as well. Drop some comments down below. If you're not in the Diamond Circle, get in right now. It's a great place to get additional content and also additional podcasts. Kyle Wilson runs our Web3 Gaming podcast over there. Does a great job. You will love that one. And it's also a place where you guys can get some additional research and it's free. Just join with the link down below. Catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.